they've done quantitative analyses where they can show there's some things switching on, on and off, but they can't find it in the genome. Well, recently they did. By the way, guys, how has it changed my life learning that WhatsApp, you can play the voice notes at two times? Oh, screen? my God, dude. Way better. <laughs> what a change, huh? Mm. I, don't, yeah. I don't feel as bad sending voice notes to you guys now. I'm like, oh, they no. can. You know, oh, way just, better. Yeah. No, I feel so bad if I see somebody write an essay. I'm like, wow, that was like a 20 minute like time he definitely took to write that at least versus a voice note you can do. You can do like an hour of writing, like five minutes with a voice note easily. No, it goes way faster. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. so annoying when you're in public and then I don't bring this uh, thing, you know? Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, I got to save this. I know I need to reply to this now, but I can't <laughs> in public, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's nice also yeah. because you get the tone of voice of the person and so on. But anyway, it's oh, yeah. better to see you guys in person. For yeah. sure, yeah. Now, Steve, that's, that's, that thing behind you, we'll talk about the next section, but what is that thing behind? Is it attached to the wall or is it like a stand-up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. No, so this, uh, I made the studio in the third room and then I yeah. had some of these panels left. So I have like literally within frame Beautiful. is uh, the leftover panels. So it Very looks nice. consistent. Yeah, thank you. It uh, okay. looks consistent with the studio, but that is a little bit more cumbersome. But I'm probably going to have to soundproof it um, because the construction around my house is... Uh, a Annoying I forgot fuck. to ask you why you have so you, many. You guys don't hear anything right now, right? No. Because I'm no. paying these guys thirty dollars per hour <laughs> not to work. Are you serious? I'm serious. Wow. I'm serious. So this this day is gonna cost me like three hundred dollars. <laughs> so so they don't. Yeah, I have to do it because otherwise it will be like, like so this for the, the whole day. For the audience, uh, Steve has construction by his house, and a very interesting yeah. event: the construction workers brought dogs with them and chickens. Dogs, chickens, and kids. <laughs> so first, I moved in. I'm like, "What the hell is this? It's like a farm, you know? Like, a little, like a little, and these these tight chickens, they're like a meter high. They're they're they're, they're, they're tall as, and they, they, you know, I, I don't even know that they they make noise. I don't know what the English word is. Um, Kukulaku. Yeah. So, but multiple times per day and loud as fuck. Wow. They're so I get, yeah, roosters, right? And then a couple uh, females. So I already told them, said, listen, I, I record YouTube from home. You guys are familiar with YouTube. I record from that room. I'm going to soundproof it. Right? I understand you have construction going on for a year, but those chickens got to go. So they, they, <laughs> they, they, they built a little enclosure. Right? So there's a little enclosure there where they keep the chickens uh, most of the time. I negotiated that I need two hours per day quiet. Uh, and then the rest of the time they're roaming free, but sometimes the dogs fight with dogs like at the other side of the street. That would definitely make I, you not procrastinate videos, knowing you have like a two hour block or else chickens are going to come out. I would definitely no, but it also, on my Yeah, shit. so at 12 o'clock on the, on the hour, I'm, I'm ready to record. And then sometimes you go over time for 30 minutes, right? Because I have a complicated subject or I can't pronounce words properly yeah. or a pee break or whatever. And then I then you're on the clock and you get very nervous and start talking very very fast and the sort of mm -hmm. and you get this in, into the, this scenario and then a couple of times i almost wanted to throw the camera out of my studio because but know, imagine imagine the lifestyle to, that you lead where you take your chickens with you to work yeah <laughs> yeah so but so they're migrant workers right so they live somewhere in the countryside oh. and then they got a project in bangkok and the whole family comes they got a car they made like a little enclosure they got tents uh yeah no no but it, like sounds like la almost yeah right so it's like we skid row right yeah. skid row yeah um, no, not even skid row the main street that's that's right what it looks like you know but it, yeah they're migrant workers and they just bring the you know they bring the house and the farm and and you know that's their life so they, they go from project to project and i understand they have to make money also but right today they're making way more money than they make over the course of a normal day right. because i told them said i i gotta I got a podcast that is important to myself and my uh, right, co-host. So uh, you guys are not going to work today. Here's some money. Right. So they're on the hour. Yeah, a thousand baht an hour. So uh, yeah, I hope this gets me some subscribers. <laughs> yeah, everyone go subscribe to Steve and Leo right now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Steve especially for the chicken. Yeah. Link in the description below, whichever. I, I forgot to mention <laughs> one thing here, which I think, Derek, you were interested in. You, we've been talking about this idea why male bodybuilders tend to get uh, female children when they're oh yeah on oh yeah yeah this is very important. <laughs> so I've been, I've been no I brought it up because of the relationship things so before we get into that. Just yeah. so I, I did I've been doing research on this for a long time and there is a lot of conflicting evidence. So basically, a lot of empirical data 
examining the what they call the sex ratio. By the way, if you want to Google this, it's called the sex ratio. For God's sake, it's so hard to find when you don't know what it's called. Like if you search gender disparity, whatever, it's really hard. It's the sex ratio. But anyway, so this the sex ratios, when you look at them empirically, some studies will find that they're that basically people who have brothers are more likely to have sons, and people who have sisters are more likely to have daughters. There is a recent 2018 very detailed quantitative meta-analysis that concludes otherwise. So it's a little bit up in the air. Uh, with that said, historically, because of this observation, which has been found, by the way, generations ago, probably, because of this observation, pe uh, scientists thought that there was likely a genetic polymorphism that determined so some gene. They didn't know what gene it was. And until recently, in the 2000s, they've been calling it the gene. Some gene that they don't know what it was, but it has a disparity that produces the gender uh, more, more likely to have females or males. And in fact, like they've done quantitative analyses where they can show there's some things switching on, on and off, but they can't find it in the genome. Well, recently they did in 2016. I'm just going to list the numbers. RS1819043 and RS1025513. Those are for the nerds that are interested in uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms <laughs> and genetics. But those two SNPs were found significantly associated with the gender of the, of the offspring. That's one thing. The second thing is, why females and not males? Well, there's a lot of interesting info about this, but I recently discovered, I didn't know this before, that the Y, uh, what do they call it? The Y spermatozoa, I don't know how they say the word, spermatozoa, but the Y spermatozoa is far more fragile and susceptible to stress-induced damage than the X spermatozoa across the board. And interestingly, now some people actually have more of one or the other, and there's debates about even in our sperm, do we have equal amounts? We don't, but the Y are by far more vulnerable. So if you were in like um, environmental stress, oxidative stress, so on, you would likely lose the Y first. And I have research evidence of this. I'll make a video of it eventually when you guys, if, if anyone listening wants evidence of it. But I, I found this in various papers. There's a lot of evidence of that the Y spermatozoa are more fragile. Groundbreaking. So is this uh, when you no, say no, really. yeah. when you say it's more fragile? Does that so that means anabolics are like directly toxic to the fragility, or like what are we? Well, no, no. I'm uh, anabolic. We know that those guys are in highly inflammatory environments. So like they're yeah. if their liver values are over twenty, then they are inflamed. So so, so that would be that's the what I mean, Speculated yeah. reason as to why a guy who is in a, a chronically inflamed state might end up with females more than males. Specifically that the Y spermatozoa express yeah. pro-apoptotic uh, genes, uh, pro-apoptotic proteins yeah. that are more susceptible to be expressed than the Y ones. And the idea being like you have an antioxidant status of your, of your actual semen and both in the semen and the seminal fluid before and also where the sperm is created, there's antioxidants there. Uh, if the oxidative stress is higher and damages the sperm, the likelihood to have apoptosis is higher among the Y than the X. Hmm. So it has nothing to do with the actual hormonal exposure now, itself. It's no, no, more that's, the, that's oh, interesting too, though, right? Because there's a lot of, in, historically, there was a lot of predictions. So they used to notice that the, the, there was a prediction that larger men have more boys. Yeah. There, there was a lot of those things. There's, in war, men tend to have, for example, in a short war, uh, the population rate of births of males increases uh, or actually decreases in a short war. And in a long war, it increases. So there's a lot of weird things going on and people for a long time thought maybe like masculinity, masculine men would have more daughters and so on. But this by itself could explain the whole thing. Because yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. So it, what I mean, can we do to protect? So you just can crank the antioxidants and get off gear. Right. I think the antioxidant status of your semen, which can be tested by the way at a urologist, would be a very good indicator of the health of them. And also the DNA fragmentation among the sperm. But by the way, I should mention men who are older, and this is a good topic for us to discuss because you guys don't have children. I have children. You need to catch up. Men who are older, <laughs> men who are older, tend to have soon, soon, children with longer telomeres. Oh, okay. Surprisingly, oh. and the reason it appears is because of telomerase's activity around their like sperm machinery. It somehow leaves lasting effects on them. Um, but otherwise, older men have more DNA fragmentation in their sperm, and their sperm are more likely to have a multitude of diseases. So if you have a guy who's on gear and he wants to have a kid, what are you telling him to do? Are you telling him to get on HCG monotherapy and stay on that and get off all the exogenous androgens and then crank antioxidants? Or what are you telling him? 
No, I, I actually just had a conversation with someone about this today. I don't think that you can reverse. Like, I think what I did was... So if you're on androgens, then you went totally off or you went on HCG, your total androgen load would be lower than you're used to. I yeah. think your epigenetic expression would then reflect a paucity of androgenic signaling. I don't want to transfer that epigenetic code to my son. I don't want him to be hypo androgenic, right? So my thought process would be rather, I would want to keep some level of the same things going on, become extremely healthy and use the HCG and FSH and be healthy with that higher, relatively higher androgen load. So you'd not stay on your blast? You wouldn't no, count. no, I, I'd, I'd basically not go, I went off. Yeah. And then I used HCG. I'd basically never go off. I would use oh, so like, you just you'd go down to HCG plus FSH, but never come off is what you're saying. HCG plus FSH plus probably if I was blasting for years and I was a bodybuilder, I would probably try to stay a little bit higher, like 400, 500 milligrams of testosterone. Oh, wow. I don't I don't know, but like a 3000 nanogram per deciliter or something if he was at five, hmm. something like that, because I don't want his hmm. my feeling is I may be uh, signaling to myself the opposite, like you're a low androgen person. Because you just had a major change and you suddenly have a paucity of androgenic signaling. Ah, That's going right. to have an effect yeah. on your epigenetics for sure. So you couldn't just yeah. go down to HCG, FSH and just hold that for a while and then like push the HCG and FSH higher and then try? I think I think you, I mean, that's basically what I did, right? I, I went uh, off and then I went on HCG and FSH and so on for, for a period of time. Actually, then I went off that totally also. But my thought process is this, when you go off, you're going to have a signal to your body. I have very little androgens. All the androgen yeah. receptors downregulated, so on. Maybe you yeah. adapt to that level in a while. Yeah. I don't know how much you so adapt. I was to thinking, level. hypothetically, you go down to like baseline replacement of HCG plus FSH, and then maybe you engage in all kinds of things that have to do with low androgen signaling. Like, I don't know, you go on a keto diet, you do fasting, you do this, you do that, and you become as like, I don't know, primed to then re be resensitized to like blow up and then you go to a higher dose of hcg and fsh plus high food plus high i don't know whatever else could be anabolic and you know proliferative or whatever and then you try for a kid good idea yeah uh, actually that's the advice i gave the person who asked me on it it was a recent consultation a couple of days ago he asked me the same thing i told him to go off and then use the hcg and fsh and ramp back up but i was like to be honest i don't really know yeah he wanted to stay on. He was in a rush. I was like, I don't really know if it will work. It takes, takes time. Yeah. I don't think you're really time. damaging yourself that much. I don't think you're getting DNA fragmentation from the steroids. And if you are, I doubt those DNA fragmented sperm are actually, um, whatever that's called, fertilizing the egg. Like they're usually. Yeah. But it yeah, I, would, really I would think more bodybuilders would have like very, very, I don't know how to like, I don't know. Disabled children would be yes, more yes, exactly. prevalent. And never stuff. had one. Not yeah. one, ever. Exactly. That was my. That's why I said to me, we have no evidence of this ever happening. I mean, no. obviously DNA fragmentation can do small things like metabolic conditions and stuff, but if it was something significant, we would see it. Hmm. I think it would result in miscarriages more than than actually children born with right uh, medical issues. Absolutely. So, so we can take myself as an example. It took me about eight, well, eight months to restore my fertility to like very good parameters. Right, with, where the semen count is very high and the morphology is reasonably normal. And in the beginning, I had like weird uh, shapes of the semen and it took a couple of months to resolve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same, by the way, ever, six to eight yeah. months was my also. Yeah, so so I think the next time I come off, I'll just forego the PCT completely and just stay on ACG and FSH yeah. for a couple of months and then, uh, and then we'll see how fast my fertility comes back with all the antioxidants and the isognet testicles and all that silly, uh, right? Um, uh, old housewives uh, protocols to uh, <laughs> right, marginally improve fertility, but it did work. Uh, 180 million per milliliter, baby. No, no but keep in, mind, keep in mind for the audience, <laughs> if you guys are interested in using what these are called assisted reproductive technologies like Clomid mm -hmm. and these things, keep in mind that the ones used for the women in particular are associated with worse health in the babies mm -hmm. eventually, and that the health of the babies um, associates with the level of assisted reproductive technology so ivf is very yeah. bad uh, the mm -hmm. level above ivf which is uh there's a there's some other level or below it there's some other similar thing similar to that if you're just using clomid or luteinizing hormone for the woman on four or five days of the year of the month it's mm -hmm. much less associated with it so it's the level of intervention the more mm -hmm. you intervene the, basically if you want to go and put the, the embryo in the egg and put it in her that is the least healthy way to have a baby possible
are I think, you? I think it's also like health, health at the start of uh, of the, of the parents because That's like health in the, being being in a good state of health usually represent is represented in fertility, right? When you're perfectly yeah. healthy, fertility is usually good. But if you're not healthy, your fertility is impaired, and you start using fertility drugs, then you're probably not healthy during the pregnancy either, which is going to affect the health of the baby. Now, this this is the most interesting aspect. So, uh, by the way, this touches on to why people say, like, having higher testosterone levels is more healthy. No, it's an indicator of a guy that is healthy. He has high mm. test levels because his balls aren't destroyed. Yeah, but, right. but, in the, but in the same case here, uh, that's very much true. So they try to weed, uh, boil it down in the papers. This is a very big question. Is it that parents can't have children because they're unhealthy and therefore their children are unhealthy? Or is it the assisted reproductive technology? And it seems yeah. very certain it's the assisted reproductive technology oh, really? partially. Partially. They're yeah, both okay. contributing, but there's something there. They can't put their finger on it, but it has to do with the technology. So are you going to be yeah. trying for a boy with assisted technologies regardless? Exactly. exactly. Are, you, are you going to, though? Yes, exactly. Which is why I'm studying it so much. Okay. Right? I'm trying to understand, mm -hmm. like, to how is it going to influence? And just for the audience to understand, the reason why I wanted to do that is because I had a girl first, and I'm concerned that if... This, I usually say this in a funny way, but yeah, I think if you have too many, it's one guy in the house, I might become a tranny one day. I don't know. It happens in certain families. <laughs> if there's five women in the house, some guy turns into a tranny. So I don't want to. No, 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 no. The key here is not to give them the opportunity for plastic surgery. Yeah, no, that's but, but anyway. So don't, uh, right? Well, that's what happened with the Jenners, right? So all the daughters do plastic surgery and then the dad wants to. And then the dad <laughs> And he, he takes it way to the next level. Eh? He wants to do the surgery for all the girls. No, but I, all just aside, I, I love women, of course, and I, I really love my daughter and my wife. But what I wanted was just to have some mixture of gender in the house. And I was thinking, if I have another child, it's another girl. Like, I want a, a son to be able to, like, look out for my elder daughter and stuff like that. So we're going to try for it. And also efficiency. You have twins instead of one child. It's, it's a lot less saving, a lot of time. So yeah. that's, that's mm. my point. Yeah, that, that's my goal. I'm, I'm scared. I'm a, we're we're, pri we're planning for about two years from now. So I got about one good year left in myself, and then one year of uh, like getting super healthy, both of us. Perfect. And then start trying. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's wonderful. So what? Yeah. What did? What did? Uh, oh, when, what? What about Derek? When is Derek having children? <laughs> Not even. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Derek is just getting started, dude. Yeah. Derek is like, <laughs> Derek's like I'm working. I'm not give having me children. Like, give me like. You people are know. not focused. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, the weird thing is, that. like, for for us, it was in the beginning like a financial thing, right? Like, I want to be financially secure, and you got, like, I want to have all the finances available so I can finally reduce the work. And yeah. then you you reach that point, and then you blow away past it. And then you're still not, right? You find another excuse. So, but I'm I'm over yeah. that excuse. My wife is getting close to it. Um, but yeah, we're I think at the age of forty, right? We we both did extensive fertility tests over the last couple of months, and uh, we're basically good to go. And then I decided to uh, squeeze out one more cycle, yeah, um, before oh. we get our. Uh, busy speaking of which by the way i never told you guys why i mentioned all that growth hormone stuff about my daughter my daughter is huge my daughter is yeah. massive yeah. She, yeah but you have an amazonian woman yeah i do that's true <laughs> but I, I also think it's partially the diet i had my wife on my wife was drinking protein shakes like four times a day during the pregnancy she never yeah. has done that before we don't drink protein shakes the whole pregnancy she did i, I had an interesting diet but my daughter is in the 99th percentile of height uh, mm -hmm. Males also 99 percentile for uh, head circumference brain, but 95 mm -hmm. percent for weight, and mm -hmm. she is in the 50 percentile for someone double her age. That's a boy. Damn. Okay. These yeah, there's, like, there's like that healthy. first like decade or decade plus where girls are like all way more developed than boys, and they can like fuck them up. Like I, you <laughs> oh, know, yeah, yeah, in school, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like up until like grade like six or seven, girls were just like always bigger than the guys just yeah. they develop so much faster and more emotionally mature and and then right better at learning and then the, the guys kind of you know slowly not all of them but some of them <laughs> some my of them. brother are you guys uh, I'll let you guys be because it's uh it's one year i haven't eaten okay but uh next time okay. well maybe if we don't do this every five months we could just we could no, i'll be <laughs> quicker i'll be quicker on the next one <laughs> promise <laughs> Uh, anyway, it was, very it was nice awesome you for sure it was awesome. i really good missed night, you guys, guys. it was nice to yeah. talk to you guys. for sure All for right. sure we'll talk to you guys soon yeah sounds All good right.